Hi folks, once again, it's Pro 1119 with Head Frame Hunters with uh, more mechanicing videos. Only this time you might notice that the uh, we got the back of the 911 cockpit torn apart and we're down in a drift. So you ask what happened? Well, the other side of this high flow tramming line decided that the 40 year old crimp on it was going to give up the ghost, so it spectacularly dumped the entire hydraulic system out the back of the machine. So now we gotta pull this little knee guard. Here's the 45 where it goes into the into the motor. Gotta pull this knee guard, run a, a new hose. Just a $108 hose. I'm not, I'm not thrilled about that. Things are getting expensive now. But run that over to the, the hydrostatic motor. So this is what it's uh, supposed to look like. See that 45? goes into the motor housing. These two armored lines are uh, uh, boom or bucket implement lines. And we come over. This kind of happened at a, a poor time. Pecos and our driller were uh, getting ready to start loading out to fire this shot and then the machine went down. So it caused a, a little bit of a delay of game. Hey, which is kind of, you know, a fact of life running these little mines. Wish I were, wish I had more space in here. But, you know, drift mechanic just kind of got to take what he can get. That's gonna quarter a wrench. As you're hearing over there, once this is wrapped up, we're gonna load and then fire that shot later than uh, you know we wanted. It's about a, a five-day delay, just on account of me working a, a day job and not being able to necessarily come up here at the drop of a hat. Like yeah, that's all it really is. I mean, it's not the end of the world. This is just uh, one of these things that happens when you're running equipment that is almost old enough to be your dad. This is, uh, according to Sandvik, who bought Imco, according to Sandvik, this is a uh, 1983 machine. It's kind of funny to me that they made 911s more or less the same for uh, 40 years because they showed up in the, or not 40, more like 30, uh, they showed up in the, the late 60s and they must have been like space age stuff back then because you know there would have been guys working then who'd come into the industry before the advent of the overshot and they come into this thing that's hydrostat driven and you know, looks like something off of Star Trek by comparison. And then I know of some that were built as late as uh, 1995. There's a, a couple of those running around up in Canada, or Soviet Kanukistan. So, yeah, they uh, they were in production for quite a while, and the only real big change that I know of was uh, going to the B model to widen out the back end of the machine by six inches to fit an extra cylinder and increase your uh, installed horsepower and your power to weight by quite a bit. This is going to take uh, more torque than I can administer while uh, holding a camera, so I'll be right back. Well, with the aid of some PB Blaster is uh, assembly loop. Got that on there. Then uh, I need to snug down this lock nut good and tight. Or gut and tight, as my German buddy would say. Yeah, that was terrible. I'll be here all week. Get that good and snug. Put my wrap wrench on it too for you know, a little extra torque. Get that on there. And then I'll be ready to pull the guard. All right, that should really do it for torque. There's an O-ring 
in there. And that's just snugging the O-ring up against the, or snugging it between the motor housing and the, the hose fitting. I just had the, oh God, the hose shop cut it too short moment. No, it's fine. We got plenty of slack here. So that comes off the tramming pump. Right, now that's all back together. And now I remember that the hydraulic fill is on the other side of the machine. So I got to carry the 60 pounds or, yeah, probably about 60 pounds of hydraulic fluid over to the other side. Cool. Hey, Gail, can you bring me uh, one of those buckets? I'll grab the other one. All right, so after we got the 911's tramming system patched up and the hydraulic refilled, we were clear to come in, start loading powder. We got, I counted 39 holes on two foot centers because going to 30 inch centers on the last shot, we got a few, uh, you know, microwaves, mini fridges, it didn't load the best, didn't muck the best. You know, bad frag will cost you down the line in uh, tire wear, machinery wear, etc. So, one thing that we do with this, and I need to tweak it, is we're going for 90 degree angles on this ring main to get a symmetrical initiation so that say if it were to to initiate clockwise if you have an angle between it if you have an angle between your non-l and your deck cord it can actually cut off the non-l and uh, cause that hole to be missed which we don't want so this one right here I'm going to see I can just swing it down in a little bit that looks better. I'm really fastidious about this. We're just doing our once over, making sure everything that should be tied in is tied in. Whippers are tied, knee holes are tied. I do believe we're uh, about ready to shoot. One finger hard. Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. That looks good. Oh, yeah. Time to go. Let's go. Five and a half minutes. So we've been letting it vent out for about an hour. I'm down to see what we got. We got a uh, less fly rock, which is interesting. I love the smell of powder fumes in the evening. It smells like a headache. It's looking decent. It's a smoky one. Oh, this shot to road gravel. This is gonna muck beautifully. Oh yeah. That's more like it. Let's see what uh, kind of face we got. Well, we got our clean face. Flat. Oh yeah, flat back, flat face. Oh, this looks. This looks really nice. Outstanding.
and I believe uh, I believe we pulled six feet. You got a, a marker that you used? Uh, no, I didn't set a mark. Okay. But if you don't see a boot. No, I do not see a boot. Let's uh, go check uh, our bootleg down here right at the burn. Yeah, so here's our one of our burn holes. That boot liked a little bit. Did shoot a clean face though. Extremely. I don't mind the boot as long as because that's probably one of the burn holes. Yeah. I did drill the burn deeper. Yeah, all in all we're looking Shoot, pretty good. We got good. back to the hole right there. Yeah, yeah, we got back to the hole right up there. That one right there. Oh, this is looking Yeah, we pulled six feet. We'll need to sound the face a little bit, but it doesn't look like it's too jointed. I don't think we're gonna get much down. Outstanding. Well there's your boot from the last hole right there, so there's yeah. your face right right where my lights are. Yeah, that pulled six feet. Excellent. That's a flat face. Yeah. Got a little bit of a knob right there, but not bad. It's a lot better than it has been. A lot. So I did something a little bit different on our lifters. I did 14s on the inside and 15s on the outside. Okay. It seemed to be a lot more manageable muck. Yeah, this muck is excellent. Like this is I, gonna dig very easily. I know we're not drilling off the pile no more, but this is this is what you want to drill off the pile. Yeah, that does need to come down. You got a bar back there. Hey, uh, it's back there though. You should see a uh, sulfide vein about two feet from the face. Here more. Okay. Face what we got. Yep. Oh, that's uh, it's not a sulfide vein. What is it? That's a quartz vein. Yeah. Yeah. So we got chalcopyrite. Uh, we've got iron pyrites. We've got clay. Uh, over here, we've got probably a, a four-inch quartz stringer be more revealing when we wet it down and then it comes out into a oh crap what? uh we've got nodular quartz breccia here we go yep <laughs> here we go folks. i'll take it. it i'll take it yeah we gotta sample this well might that is well fun off the pile because that's really easy to grab right where you're at yeah we might as well it's now the next morning. We've taken uh, probably about a 10 pound sample of this vein material. So what we encountered here appears to be two stringers. Uh, this one here, it's about that four inch wide one on this little sill. And then one beyond it that appears to maybe be about six inches in width and then we go back out to country rock we're just sampling it for uh informational purposes really and just in case it runs uh you know super high grade nodular but we're overall getting good indications that we should be into our target ore zone pretty soon i want to say uh Probably two more shots. We'll know when we start to get large amounts of quartz cuttings out of the drill. Now we're gonna head topside, fire up the truck, fire up the mucker, start emptying the remuck, and then uh, if possible, we're gonna muck this pile today too as well. This is what happens when we use 30 inch centers and uh, a blend of gel dye and ampho. We get frick craters to come out of the muck pile. This is uh, what we shot previously. That was uh, that shot was probably 60, 75 percent ampho, uh, remainder being gel dye. This is all in the muck bag to make room for the most recent shot. Just, uh, Drawing down that muck bag so that we can have a, a real quick haul, a real, real quick muck out on the face. Just uh, run a motor carry. Now 
Now we'll still be running the truck there, so some of that will go topside. We don't want to touch the muck more than once we can help it. Unfortunately, we just can't help it. I just got done dumping out another load up top. So, after we got this dump road passable, uh, we started running all of our waste material up top here. So, you can see a little bit beyond there. Uh, what we're going to be doing is pushing this material off to start that, uh, that next lift on the road. And that's going up to uh, what's planned to eventually be an escapeway shaft or raise board. So it might come up here with uh, Big Chungus since it runs now and should be able to handle this amount of muck fairly well. Push off the edge, clear additional space. All in all, it's... Uh, Working pretty decently dumping up here. Just barely see the top of the hoist house down there. I just took the ninth and final load of the day up to the dump. Works out to uh, about 45 tons, which uh, Essentially an entire round that we mucked in uh, a span of four hours with quite a bit of self-loading in there. So I gotta say I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that pace. It's, well, that, that's what we were expecting uh, for having an operator on the muck. So all in all, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> 